Informed, outspoken, wild, fearless. This is the Fantasy Football Dudes Podcast. With the Fantasy Football Dudes Podcast, I am joined by Jordan and Seth. We do not have Phil in attendance tonight. I do not know what he's doing. I don't know if I really want to know what he's doing. Honestly, he is not here. I will be quarterbacking this show. We will be doing our week four matchups. Check the whole thing out on YouTube. Got a nice new snazzy little background. Uh, We're also available wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on socials at TFF Dudes on Twitter slash x or instagram but uh seth how we doing my man buddy i guess i should say are you my new buddy does anyone yeah, want I was to doing take good. i role? just got back from my uh my my wife's grandma's house actually jordan's grandma I just had dinner with my uh my grandma and now i'm here on the pod it's been a good day nice nice jordan how you doing that basketball season officially just got home from practice so i uh, ran home and and we're here been a busy day but it's it's good Perfect. Well, let's get into these week four matchups, guys. I am coming in from out of town, home of the Savannah Bananas. So I'm on this East Coast time zone, the thing I do not like at all. It's rough. But I did post on Twitter, you know, craziest waiver wire ads for a t-shirt. And I got one crazy one for you guys. You guys want to hear it? Yeah, it's here. So yeah. So go ahead, check this out, guys. Every Tuesday, every Wednesday, I will post for waiver day craziest waiver ads. So you guys can go fill that out. This week's craziest waiver ad was someone in goes to El Jefe at El Jefe Munoz 13. And someone in his league added the Pittsburgh Steelers defense for $51 worth of fab. So Whoa. I think that's pretty crazy. I'm curious <laughs> to see. I'm curious to see what the second two people did bid, but I think that's way too much money for it for a defense. So uh, we're all about exposing uh, bad league mates, right? So uh, congratulations, El Jefe. You'll be getting that uh, fantasy athlete t-shirt. So I will be contacting you. Uh, But yeah, that was the craziest one by far. So alrighty. So let's hop into our week four preview guys, matchups. Today's week four kickoff is brought to you by trophies. Mac, the dude's favorite place to get our fantasy football trophies, from first place trophies to participation ribbons, Trophy Smack has you covered. Go to www.trophysmack.com forward slash dudes for 15% off your whole entire order. All right, Jordan, do you have the totals ready from last week? You got that quick and ready to go, or have we not yeah. had those up? Yep. No, i just doing it right now, actually. Uh, so mm-hmm. I went, uh, so Trent, you actually were in last place this week with uh, at nine and seven. Uh, Phil was in sec a third with 10 and six. Seth went 11 and five, and I actually won the week at 12 and four. Wow. Nice. So, do you match my record last week? Did I get 12 last week or no? Uh, no, you were 11 and five, 11 and five, week one, okay. week two. So, gotta get back in those double digits. So, uh, all right. And Phil did send his picks in, so that is good. He won't be getting docked there, but we might just dock him for you know not having perfect attendance, right? So uh, we'll do that. Read my, right. uh, maybe my uh, name description. That yeah, says Seth's, it all. Yeah, Phil, Seth's name description on YouTube says it all. You guys can go check that out at TFF Dudes. Alrighty, so let's jump into Thursday night football here, guys. We have the 2-1 and one Lions traveling to Green Bay to take on the 2-1 and one Packers. The total is 45, and Detroit is fin- favored by 1.5. Uh, Christian Watson is playing in this game. Go, I am baby. not sure about Packers running backs. I think you can start Christian Watson. Jordan, what notes do you have for this game? And we have, do we have a sleeper play? Uh, yes, I, I think Trent, I think we just, you people need to watch the, uh, need to watch socials for sleeper play. Let's, let's just right. do that. That's perfect. That's perfect. That, that works um, with me. And, uh, but, I thought, I, we, we got some of the injury news before the pod, which I'm actually surprised about. We got the Christian Watson news tonight, but 10 minutes ago almost, um, that he's playing. So, and then the Aaron Jones. We're waiting on Aaron Jones. So, I tend to think maybe Aaron Jones isn't playing. I don't know, though. We'll see. Um, yeah. I guess, can you play Christian Watson? You just said you can, but I, I don't know. Can you, Trent? Like, I think you can. Yeah, I said I think he's the number one, and you've held on to him this long. I I think you kind of so, but 
I guess it maybe depends on how your team is with Christian Watson because I would just worry, like, are they going to let him just go full go right away? Like, talking about a guy who's had hamstring problems, an he injury. Problem, right? Right? No, I know, but, like, are they just going to go full go at 90% snaps with Christian Watson right away? I, I have a hard time believing that. Like, is it going to be 30%, 40%, 50%, 60 Like, where... I, I just don't know. There's a lot of questions. I guess I have. the severity of the hamstring injury, right? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, three weeks. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I, I'm very like, I just don't know. Maybe we get some news. And honestly, we probably will get some news of a snap count or full go, some type of limitations. If we get no, yeah. no limitation from the coach, then I'm starting them. But if I hear... Oh, uh, we're gonna ease them in. You know, there'll be some limitations. I don't know. I probably depends on who else you have on your team. Yeah, I think if I think most guys would probably have Dubs on their team. Like I know every league I have Watson and I have Dubs, so I'm not really worried either way. I just know the explosiveness that Watson has is just what I've been missing in that. Like as my second receiver, you know that I've been missing. No, yeah, I get you. Um, so. I also on, drafted on the, him in a best ball draft or in a in a uh, Thursday night slate draft on underdogs. So I want him to play. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. It's yeah. actually actually uh, I would take that back. It's the Thursday night Sunday morning slate. That's what they did. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, Detroit this, side. Go ahead, Trent. Sorry. Well, no, I was just saying sleepers our favorite place for fantasy football. Enter promo code. Dudes, 100, they'll match you up to $100. Really helps us out. Could help you out. You know, we're still a little bitter about that uh, Monday night burner that Puka let us down. You know, I talked about that a little bit on our waiver pod. If you haven't listened, go check it out. I just got Jordan in a bad mood again, though, bringing up. We were a catch away from Trent, some serious I, cash. I had, I, had, I had finally gotten over that, and then you brought it back. Well, what's up with that? I finally <laughs> moved on, you know, moved on to the next slate, and you bring it back up again. But that's okay, but for what it's that, worth, though. We did the math on what Jordan's up this year, and we're up six units right now. So we're looking pretty yeah, good. Yeah. So, so yeah, on the on the on the video, and that wasn't even a video play. For being honest, Trent, right? Like we were just mad because all of us had that play. We didn't give that out. Yeah. It was just yeah. We were just mad yeah. about that. But uh, video plays two and two, one unit. If you put one unit on it, that could be whatever your unit is. I uh, like it could be fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, twenty bucks, five bucks. I don't. I don't unit shame. People can play whatever they want. That's up to. Mm -hmm. But if you go but one unit on the video plays, we're up, we're two and two, but we're up six units. So like, if you play the video plays, in theory, you should be up six six units. So that that's still pretty good. And because they're all five x, you know, you can afford to lose some and still be profitable. Mm -hmm. So yep, that's the fun part of it. So you just got to be about fifty percent, and you're gonna make make money. So all righty. And uh, you'll have Detroit? a you'll have a sleeper play on on, on sleeper, Twitter. Sleeper Jordan. play, yeah, yep, probably yeah. tomorrow morning. And that is at J Meta underscore seventeen. So that's J E M H T A underscore seventeen. Guys, give him a follow. I will also be retweeting that at T F F Dudes. Um, so on the Detroit side, Trent, I think it's pretty obvious. Like Montgomery, we need the Montgomery news. That that's also big news in this game because if Montgomery plays. I think he is viable. I think Gibbs is probably you're just going to play Gibbs no matter what, you know, your draft capital on him. And then St. Brown. And then I like Laporta, Laporta this week. Um, mm -hmm. I like Laporta Seth, too. Yeah, Laporta. And then I think on the other side, Seth, you can take this one because you, you pointed out first about Musgrave. Yeah, so if you look, I think uh, both teams are very – have given up like really good yards to the tight ends and touchdowns. Um, so I think this is like probably the best play of the week for tight ends. Either you want to play one of these two guys. And I think they both have a chance of being a top five finisher. Potentially like one of them could have a huge game. I would probably lean more Laporta has the huge game, but um, I think if you play either of these guys, you're going to be pretty happy. So. I mean, Detroit's given up the most fantasy points to tight ends this year. The yeah. most yards of tight ends this year. Like they're really giving it up to tight ends. And the issue with Musgrave, though, is I just, and this is where I just don't know how much does Watson coming back E into that? It's just, yeah, there's a lot of question marks. I think I'm going to, I'll say if it wasn't such a good spot, I would have more doubts, but those numbers don't lie. I mean, Detroit obviously is 
is vulnerable to the tight ends. And Musgrave is a good receiving tight end. So I think I'm going to trust Musgrave this week. Yeah, he's tight in 12 on the season. We're still waiting for him to get into the end zone. I, It's going to happen, guys. I, like, should have. Really- week, week one, Musgrave should have yes. scored. He literally fell, tripped over the grass. Week yeah, one. and it's. Yeah, so he's going to find the end zone. I, I'm big on Musgraves and Ferguson. I keep saying on the waiver pod, add those two guys. Is there anything else we want to touch on in here? You know, you're playing your St. Browns. You're playing your – is St. Brown, is he – he has a little bit of a turf toe. He's fighting through, but he should be – I mean, he's going to play. He looks fine last week. Oh, yeah. Trent, I'm done with A.J. Dillon. No more A.J. Dillon. Like, the guy's – Yeah, toe. don't play him. Yeah. I'm Maybe he has some you're value. questionable, right? Aaron Jones is still questionable. Honestly, maybe AJ Dillon has more value with Aaron Jones. I don't know. I just I'm done with AJ Dillon. Like, yeah. Are they what I'm curious about, Seth? I don't know if you have PFF pulled up, but like I don't know what the Packers average rush inside the five yard line is this year. Maybe he's not getting those opportunities to run the yeah. ball within the five yard line. I know PFF usually has that. I'm gonna look it up right if now. I'm looking at the, the game the this if I'm looking at the game. It seems like Detroit has the edge running the ball. So I think if Montgomery plays Gibbs, it's going to be a good spot there. Um, I think the run game, though, is actually for the Packers. I mean, it's at a, it's the passes at a 22% advantage, the runs at a negative 38% advantage. Um, the Lions only give up 40% of their touchdowns within the five yard line. So it's going to be hard to get that running back touchdown. Um, yeah, I just think I think you just stay away from just the Packers guys. I think I think we're all hoping this is a high scoring game. So I think we're thinking a lot of passing. And so I think I would just stay away from Aaron Jones, who's been hurt, and AJ Dillon, who hasn't done squat while he's been hurt. So yeah, and honestly, Thursday night football games don't tend to be high scoring games, right? I'm not I sure. Mean, last it's, week kind of was on one yeah. side, but yeah, historically, it seems like the short week kind of favors the short weeks. Defense yeah. kind of the longer the season goes on, potentially. Um, do we want to? The thing make is pick? that the Detroit defense isn't great, and neither is Green no. Bay's defense. So, no. yeah, it is at forty-five, so that's a decent total. Yeah, I am going to say that the. I'm going to go Packers win this one at home as much as I love Dan Campbell, as much as I like the Lions, as much as I like Jared Goff and all those weapons. I think this is a good Thursday night game. I'm excited for it, but I'm going to go Packers. I'm going to go with the home team. Man, who the Packers are Packers are favored or Detroit's favored. I'm going to go Detroit here. Yeah, I got I think I'm going Detroit, too. Okay. All right, and I believe Phil Phil has all his picks. They're on my phone right now. He didn't put it on the show doc like a normal human being. So uh, we have him, but we don't know what he's picking, unfortunately. I'd have a hard time believing he's going for the Packers, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll fill him in later. It's not worth okay. our Phil, time. To go Phil picks now. the Lions. All right. So I have uh, – let's go over to our next game, over to the Sunday slate, guys. This game is across the pond, so get your tea and crumpets ready. This is – I'm not sure what time this is. This is a 6.30 a.m. game, 6.30 kickoff. 6.30 uh, Pacific time, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. All right, we have the Falcons at 2-1 and one playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are 1-2, and 43.5 total. Jacksonville is favored by three. London game over the pond. Calvin Ridley revenge game. Kyle Pitts, I believe, has scored more touchdowns. Uh, he scored touchdowns on foreign soil. He has a London TD, so maybe Pitts has a game. I I doubt it, but uh, I'm more excited excited for Calvin Ridley in this game. Jordan, what do you got in this whole, you know, for your guess? Question. Didn't the Calvin Ridley saga start two years ago where he didn't, he didn't get on the plane to London? When they yeah. were playing the Jaguars, they were playing the Jaguars, so. right? Yeah, maybe. He didn't get on the plane, and then it just went, and then he left. Then he didn't play for mental health, then the gambling thing. The last game he played for the Falcons was that, or he didn't play. He never got on the plane to London, and it was all downhill from there, right? Mm-hmm. I know it was yeah, something right. like that. I don't know if they played the Jaguars specifically, but I know it was a London game, and he just didn't get on the plane. Yeah, there's a good chance that it was the Jaguars. You know, they're kind of basically, you know, that's their second home. Yeah. And that's why they're favored by three. And that's, just, yeah, 
that just clicked for me right now that that that's what yeah. happened. Yeah, whether it was Jacksonville or not, it was a London game. And what's weird about this is, I don't know, from what I hear from players, they hate playing in London just because of the travel and everything. Like, it's terrible. And I know the Jaguars, they do it twice a year. No, so this year is the first time they're playing twice, and they're playing back-to-back -back weeks. That's so, a big advantage for next week. Are they going to stay over there? That's what I think, They're right? staying. Yeah, yeah. It's a two-week yeah. trip to London. So yeah. I, I know I think a lot of family, like I know Trevor Lawrence said his whole entire family is there. His parents, why like so I I would imagine a lot of families are probably going just because mm -hmm. it's a two week, like it's a 10 day trip, probably. So yeah. um guys are probably I think that gives an advantage to the Jaguars both weeks, I think, because you're yeah, gonna have there family early, yeah. at, I think it probably does give a huge advantage for the Bills next week, but where they're gonna need the advantage more. But uh yeah, this Jaguars team, man, they, they got to get right. Like, I still am, I'm very frustrated, but I still have faith because all the reasons why they were hyped, those reasons are still there, you know? Like, it, things are just not clicking on offense. Um, so, we'll see what happens, but I, you would think at some point this Jaguars team is more talented than what they've shown. I'm hoping Zay Jones can play because I think he actually adds that third receiving element that they need. Um so I, I just, yeah, I like Ridley. Like at some point the guy dropped a, a, a touch, a wide open touchdown last week. I think if he catches that pass, the game's probably completely different. First drive mm -hmm. down, down the field drops a pass. Um, he's a season so, high or he's a setting a, I think he's leading the league and drop passes up four. Yeah. Yeah. And he had like false starts. He's in his head, I think. So he's getting a lot I, of targets he, still though. So I think the usage is, yeah. is good. Yeah. So I think, right. I think in the revenge yeah. game, Trent's right. So, I mean, he's got to get right, right here. I almost made him my start of the week, Jordan, just for the revenge game narrative. Yeah. I, I think it's fine. Like you're, you're playing Ridley. Um, I think you're playing Ingram. I think Ingram's getting a lot of good usage too. Uh, Kirk, if Zay Jones is out and then Travis Etienne, like, I don't I think know. It's a really good spot Travis for ETN, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Same um, for Bijan. I think this is smash for Bijan this week. Here's a problem. Why here's my issue, Seth, is that it is a lot better. Here's the problem with what we've just said. It is by the numbers, it is a better matchup for Jacksonville through the air than on the ground. Yes. And it is a lot better matchup for the Falcons through the air than on the ground. But the issue is the Falcons can't throw the ball, don't throw the ball, won't throw the ball, whichever yeah, one it is. Them. I don't really know. Um, you can't really, I guess you can play Drake London, but like both Pitts and London are not getting there in the same. They're just not enough to go around. But it's a mm -hmm. it's a lot better matchup. The Jaguars are getting torched through the air. Um, and they're a lot better against the run. And the same for the Falcons. Like the Falcons are a lot worse against the pass or a better run defense. But I still think ETN looks really good. He was the probably the only Jaguar who played good last week. And then um, I think it's a great spot for, for Lawrence and Ridley to get right. But we'll see. All right. I'm going to go Jaguars. I got I Jaguars. I gotta go, I gotta go Jaguars too. They have a little bit more. Bill went Falcons. They're a little more used to it. Bill went Falcons. Okay. I'm going Jags. All right. Moving on. We have this is an exciting game right here. Remember to give us a follow on Twitter at TFF Dudes, guys, for our waiver wire fun and all that good stuff. We had a really nice video of Caleb Williams getting hit, you know, this week. You might want to go check that out. Went kind of crazy on Instagram, had over 200,000 hey, views. Where, yeah. where did he get hit at? Uh, yeah. Speaking of Caleb hey. Williams. Hit. Yeah, this is a good, uh, you know, he's he didn't look like a modern man in that in that video, right? And the modern man's a man. Might, hey, he might need some help where he got hit, for being honest. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He might need so to take care like, of himself. Yeah, so go head over to Manscape if you are the modern man. And uh, I don't have my cue card, but enter promo code DUDES20 for 20% off your whole entire order. For, you know, Caleb Williams might be able to use a... The lawnmower 4.0 or a weed whacker. I don't know. But go ahead, go over to Manscaped. Tell them the dudes sent you guys. And uh, yeah, dudes 20 really helps us out. I don't think out. they have any fingernail products for him, though. So yeah, his fingernails are pretty gross. <laughs> so good, good cue there, Jordan. That would have been a good time to do that. And I totally botched that. So <laughs> thank you for that. I and uh, yeah, I don't have my cue card. Sorry, I'm on the road. 
be- one of the better games of the week. We have the Dolphins, who are 3-0, and going to Buffalo, who is 2-1. and The total is 53.5, and Buffalo is favored by 2.5. We don't have any starts, any sits, but I think this is kind of – what everybody wants to know, Jordan, is what can we do with Devin – is it? He said he wants to be called Achon. Achon. I think yeah, that's what he, I think that's how you pronounce. Is that what he how said. it's pronounced? A-chan. He said now yes. that's how he wants it pronounced. Like, can we play him in this game? I, the the Bills are a better defense for sure. Um, Do we I know if that's the, Ahmed's is Ahmed playing? I think it's probably too early if he's game yeah. time decision or not. Looking at PFF, what is Achon? Achon is running back 27, according to PFF, on the week. And Raheem Mostert is running back nine. So I think this is kind of the week where you can tell, you know, what his usage might be. I know a lot of people, I, I saw one guy, uh, Steve, on Twitter said that. He's playing Achon over Garrett Wilson this week. Interesting. I think that's a mistake, but yeah, I mean that's just so. me personally. He still has time I'm to trying. change his lineup or whatever. Yeah, no. Um, I'm just trying to. Buffalo's like not a bad run defense. They're like a mid back run defense. So I just it's tough, man. They like Mostert a lot too, and I know that Achon was so good, but. It's tough. It's just a tough situation. Um, so looking looking at the Bills, Buffalo's defense, Buffalo's only giving up twelve fantasy points per game to running backs. Okay, yeah, their first game. Who'd they play week one? Seems like a while they got, ago. They got um, embarrassed the by the Jets. Yeah, so they gave up one hundred and seventy two rushing yards to the Jets, fifty five rushing yards versus the Raiders, and one hundred and five rushing yards last week versus I can't remember who they played at the moment. So they're not giving up touchdowns, I think is the thing. Yes. Um which is what you need. And I, I I think you can play him, Trent. I'm gonna go I think you can play him depending on who's on your team. Like there might be situations where you just have to play him. I, I get mm-hmm. that, you know, or yeah. it's like, hey, if you're AJ Dillon or H on, play H on, please. Yeah, you know, if that's your dilemma, go ahead and play H on. Um I think this could be a big Gabe Davis game. Like Trent, he you're looks... on mute. I muted myself. No, I'm here. Never mind. I'm on. I'm okay. on mute. Never mind. All right. Sorry. So I think you can play Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis looks a lot better this year. Yeah. If you touch the mic right there, Jordan, it's kind of finicky there. But uh, I think you can play Gabe Davis. He looks a lot better, and he looked good last year up to the point when Josh Allen got hurt, and he never was the same. I think Gabe Davis might be kind of what we thought he was going to be last year this year. So. From what I'm seeing from Gabe Davis, he looks pretty good. And I think we can blame most of that last year on Josh Allen's arm, just not being 100% from what I've seen so far. Um, maybe a good James Cook spot. Yeah, I think Cook is fine here. Um, it's just a really good game. I think you just kind of play everybody, honestly, is what I think. Um, yeah. Kincaid's the one I have issues with, Trent. I, I really high on Kincaid. He's only playing 50% snaps. He's getting out snapped by Dawson Knox. Um, his snap percentage think, is going down. So yeah. it's just... I, think, I don't I think they're, they're playing less two-tight the in personnel. Block. And they're, and they're yeah. not playing as much two-tight in personnel, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're going to be... I think Gabe Davis is keeping Kincaid on the sidelines, maybe. And I think Kincaid's just young, right? So maybe they aren't playing him quite yet. So I think he'll get there. I just don't know if it's this year. You probably need to wait and see a little bit more. But yeah, I think you start... Everybody is Waddle. Do we know for sure about Waddle yet? Waddle's Waddle's playing. Okay, so Waddle's playing. Okay. This is going to be a great game, though. It's I think it's the equivalent to the Chargers-Vikings game last week. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I'm going to say Bills win this game. I'm going to go with the home dog. Tyreek Hill, though, the Dolphins look pretty good. If they can protect Tua, the Dolphins are tough to beat. But I'm going to say Bills win this game. I'm going to go Bills, too. Yeah, Trent, that's what I was listening to somebody today, and that's on a podcast, and that's what they were kind of saying, that, uh, you know, like if Tua, Tua is like an easy quarterback to kind of like read, if you think he's going to have time in the pocket, he's probably going to do well. 
If he's not yeah. going to have time in the pocket, um, he's probably not going to do well. And I haven't looked at the pass rush numbers for the Buffalo, but I feel like they're not like they're getting huge pass rush on teams. I know last week they destroyed Sam Howell, but I think Sam Howell just sucks. So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if you had those numbers set. Do you have those numbers? I can pull it up. It's it's not it's not worth um I just think I don't think they're like elite at the pass rush. So I think I'm gonna actually gonna go with Miami here. I'm starting to okay. believe in Miami. I, I might regret it, but uh <laughs> as of right is. now, as of right now, I think Waddle's on pay. He's gonna get the two thousand receiving yards, like he said. The guy looks unbelievable. Oh, Tyreek. Uh, sorry, Tyreek. Yeah, Tyreek's yeah. gonna get the yeah. So they're about they're right. about the same. They're about the same defense versus the pass. So should be okay. fine. Should be. A, I think it should. That's why the game total's so high. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, guys, uh, check out the Fantasy Dad at TFF Dad on X. If you have any starts and sit questions, he's been sharing a lot of video. You know, he does a video every day, his Fantasy Dad Minute, where he gives us, a, he's been giving us some shout outs. We're going to give him some shout outs. You know, he's kind of a friend of the pod, but he will answer your start and sit questions. So go ahead and check him out. Uh, Tom's a great guy. We really like him. Definitely a friend of the dudes. But with that being said, we are going on to our next matchup. And in this matchup, I believe Seth has a start. We have the Vikings who are 0-3 going to Carolina to play the Panthers who are 0-3. The, the total is 44.5. Minnesota is favored by three. Seth, what do you got here? Who's your start of the week? So we got the we got the first toilet bowl game of the season. Both teams are 0-3. There will only be one team left after this. And if it's the Vikings, I'm going to be very surprised. But because it's the Vikings – I have my start of the week as Adam Thielen. So I think we got the news that Bryce Young is starting, which is I'm a little disappointed because I made this start before I found out he was playing, but I think it's fine. Um, week two, Bryce Young, Adam Thielen connected seven for nine, 54 yards and a touchdown. But last week with Andy Dolan, he was 11 for 14 for 145 and a touchdown. That was against the Seahawks pass defense, which is not good. But the encouraging thing about this is Minnesota's pass defense, I think, is the league worst within three games, 55 receptions and 710 yards and five touchdowns um, given up to receivers. Um, and I think they're either the same or worse than the Seahawks secondary. Uh, we all know the Vikings are going to score points, so the Panthers are going to have to throw the ball and hopefully Bryce Young's on it. And that means he's going to be throwing to the number one receiver and Adam Thielen. So hopefully I'm. I, I hope he's going to get around seven plus catches. I think 80 to hundred yards and hopefully that touchdown. If you're giving up five touchdowns in three games to receivers, likely there's going to be a touchdown to receiver this week. And I'm hoping it's Adam Thielen and not DJ Chark, but we'll see. So Adam Thielen start of the week, fire him up. I think you can also play DJ Chark in this just because Minnesota's past events is abysmal. I, I like the Adam Thielen play. He's wide receiver nine on the season so far. Uh, I think it's a good spot for him playing against his former team and just Minnesota. This could be a game where they just both teams are throwing the whole time. I do agree, though. I would feel better if Dalton was the starting quarterback, I think. Jordan, anything, you know, you're starting your Jeffersons. We're probably playing Justin Jefferson's sleeper play no matter what the receiving yards so, is. Right? That that, I actually I'm that. smashing it, yeah. No, it, it's Seth. It's below 100 now. I oh, think really? that's the mark. It's at 99 and a half now. I think we hit it. It's over 100. Um, and I think, like, honestly, I think the Adam Thielen over four and a half receptions, I think you can just lock smash that too. Like, yes. just because I, I think I like that over the yards. The yards are 51 and a half. But like you said, week two, seven, seven catches for 54 yards, you know? So he easily yeah. could just have, like, four or five, five just – you know, the five for 35 game wouldn't surprise me or the seven mm -hmm. for 45 game wouldn't shock me, but he's this. I couldn't agree more with what you said, Seth, like this whole game, like both the Vikings are absolutely atrocious against the past. So, so bad, um, so bad. My, my only thing. So it's actually a good spot for the Carolina, uh, for the Minnesota run game. I mean, Carolina got worked by Ken Walker last week. Um, I think, uh, week one, um, Algier and Bijan ran all over them, right? Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head who they played in week two. Uh, would that have been Packers? Packers, right? Well, yeah, yeah AJ Dillon sucks, so there's that. But um, I think that's actually his best game of the season. But uh, 
So, but here's the issue. Cam Akers is probably active this week. And what is the, the Madison Akers thing? I just don't know. Like, as good of a spot it is, I can't, like, actually say you should play one of them until we get more, like, clarity on what that's going to look like if we do get that clarity. They didn't just trade for Akers not to use them. And I know Madison looked good last week, but I think anyone can kind of run on the Chargers is a great spot for him. And it's a great spot here, too. I just don't know what it looks like, I guess is what I'm saying. I wish I yeah. knew because I think one of them is probably going to have a good game. I just don't know which one if they're, you know, I just don't know the situation there. All right. I'm going to say Vikings win this game. Does anyone want to go on the Panthers side? I think you can play Miles Sanders still. Uh, I think my, uh, Miles Sanders, it, I think Miles Sanders is in a good spot too, Trent. I think so. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go Vikings win this game. Kirk finally gets that win. Kirk's kind of playing for his job right now. You know, there's a lot of talks about maybe them starting to tank for Caleb Williams. Uh, but I like Adam Thielen and honestly, my favorite thing, like where if you wanted to make some serious cash, you could have picked Adam Thielen in your best ball leagues. And us being a best ball, our favorite place to play best ball is underdog. Underdog, you know, they have all those best ball drafts. You can draft every single week, guys. Promo code dudes will match up to $100. Helps you out, helps us out. And we're, you know, you're giving some money, you're getting some money. Go to underdog, and we're going to have an underdog draft at the end of the pod. So you won't want to miss that. And it's just going to be S3. So if you have a couple buddies that you want to do a draft with each week, maybe your season's not going how you like it. Maybe you just want some more side bets. You just have that draft each week. It's a lot of fun. I definitely encourage you to go check that out. Who do you guys got taking this game? I'm going to go Vikings, get their first dub. Want to try um, to get one on here, think, Jordan? No, no. I think I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go Vikings. I was just seeing if I have any Adam Thielen, Trent, in best ball. I'm gonna assume no because I was not very high on him. <laughs> I was. I don't think I have any either. I have like, I have funny story. I have 38% Terrence Marshall Jr. And I don't think okay. I have any Adam Thielen. I'm hoping Terrence Marshall starts to get it going. Honestly, I, I don't know. But uh, all right, we go to our next game here. I have a start in this game. We have the 0 and 3 Bronco. Another 0, you know, another. This We have two games with teams that don't have wins, but we have the 0 and 3 Broncos traveling to Chicago to take on the 0 and 3 Bears. The line is 46. Denver is favored by three and a half. And my start of the week here is I have Javante Williams. I really like him in this matchup. I'm looking at the Bears rush defense. They gave up 91 rushing yards their first game, 120, 153. This is just a team that is falling out of control, both sides of the ball. But I think Javante Williams finally gets going in this game. And uh, we've been waiting for it. It's what? It's week four. So the knee should be, you know, getting close to 100%. But I really like Javante in this matchup. I don't know what you think about Javante, Jordan. Well, you one, worried? this is this is the actual toilet bowl, Seth. This one is the yeah, toilet bowl. It's These worse. Are this one's worse. Probably the two worst teams. Yeah, they're the two worst teams because the Cardinals are playing better than these two teams. So these are the two worst teams in the league. They just. The Broncos gave up 70 points. Like, you got to try hard to give up 70 points in an NFL game. Anyways, yeah. um, and the Bears, these two teams gave up a combined 110, 111 points last week, Trent. Yeah. That's insane. It's be wild. It's be wild. Um, so, like, these games either go two ways, though, right? Like, they either really suck and they're just boring and low scoring, or both teams are so bad that, they're good. Like the game ends up being a decent game, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I kind of lean that way, actually, that there's offense in this game. So I, I'm right there with Javante. That's in my note, Javante's spot. I think Sutton's also in a good spot. I think DJ Moore's in a good spot on the opposite side um, because we saw what the Viking, I mean, the, the Dolphins did to this, uh, this uh, Broncos team. The problem <laughs> is it's like, it's the best spot Fields is going to have all year at this point. Like, this is the gut check game for Justin Fields, I think. Yeah. You might want to trade him after this game. I, I I just, if he can't do it here, he's not going to do it all year. Yeah. He and, should and have so, some more rushing. I, I just, I just, I, it has to be the Fields game, right? Like, yeah. If and there's I, going to be a Fields game. Yeah, and this is ugly, but I think you can do it. I think you can play Russell Wilson in this game. 
potentially. I just don't know if the Broncos score enough. But look at this, Jordan. Uh, I believe Russell Wilson – sorry, I thought he was on that graph. Uh, I believe he's QB 11 on the season. Like he's playing a lot better. Um, I, I know I don't like it, but if there's anything else you want to pull up on that. But, yeah, Russ doesn't look – the only thing I want to say, Trent, is that I've been right on Russell Wilson for the last two. When did we start doing this pod? Three years ago. Three years ago. I've been saying Russell Wilson that sucks ever since then. I have Phil trying to tell me that he doesn't suck. I have Seth. I don't know. I think Seth was kind of in the middle, you know. But like Russell, he Wilson sucks. Flat out washed. He's been washed since he was in Seattle. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I, I couldn't yeah. like. He's with, with, QB. He's QB nine on the season. I don't think I could look at myself in the mirror train, and play Russell Wilson. I don't think I could look at myself in the mirror and tell someone they should play Russell Wilson. But I don't know. I, I guess you yeah, could. I, I don't love it. But here's here's the deal. Like, uh, just looking at some matchups here. Like, I, this is like the first week that'd be like, if you're a Justin Fields owner, you might want to pick up Russell Wilson for the on the future. Because I this is a good Fields game, but next week I don't know who they're playing. Would you rather play Justin Fields or Russell Wilson? You, you know what I'm saying? There's I a lot of I guys. Still who, lean, I lean Justin Fields, I guess, just because I saw Justin Fields being a lead yeah. producer less than six, eight months ago. I haven't seen Russell Wilson being a lead fantasy producer That's in four true. years. That's true. So, yeah. like, and yeah. and I think Sean Payton, man, I don't know what. He just seems like a different coach. To, I don't know. He, no, I think I think Sean Payton's a good coach, but I think he's very overrated to what he did with Tony Romo and what he did with Drew Brees. Like Russell Wilson's not what those two guys are. So That's like we true. haven't. Yeah, like I know everybody. Like I said it all off season. Like everyone loves Sean Payton, but he's a glorified Mike McCarthy that hasn't he, proved it in a while. Is he like a? a he's probably one. Of the, there's two types of coaches, right? There's coaches who overachieve with bad players or not yeah. bad players, but they overachieve with less talented players or there's another like two types of good coaches. Those who overachieve with okay players and get the best out of them or good coaches who just make good players elite, you know, and they say, or they win super bowls with good players and not every coach can do that. But I think Sean Payne's like he had drew Brees and he made drew Brees really good. And that team really good. And Bill Belichick's kind of the same way, right? He's mm -hmm. made, he made, he took really good players and took them to the next level. So, um, and Russell Wilson's not a good player, in my opinion. So, anymore. Yeah. Hey, Phil said he was going to go off. So, I don't care. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Phil's been saying he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't go off every week for the last four years. It's true. Okay. I'm going to say that Broncos win this game. Anyone going Bears? Is it in Denver? It's in Chicago. Oh, man. I'll go. Man, I don't like saying this, but I'll go Denver, too. Um, Russell Wilson sucks. Go Bears. Okay, Bear Neon, you heard it here first. All right, next game, we have some starts and sits. We have the 2-1 and Ravens traveling to Cleveland to take on the 2-1 and Browns. The line is 41. Cleveland is favored by 2.5. I will go with... Me and Seth actually both have sits. My sits is I have Ravens running backs. I'm just not seeing enough out of this backfield. It looks like Lamar is finally going to start taking things into his own hands. Browns are giving up 50 rushing yards per game on the ground. Uh, Gus Edwards had the backfield to himself last week, ran for 51 yards. He also got a concussion, but Harbaugh said he is not in the concussion protocol right now. But I don't like any Ravens running backs until, you know, Till they prove something to me, it doesn't look good. And, and Lamar is running the ball more again. So, Seth, what's your sit you have here? So, this might, I don't know if it necessarily contradicts what you're saying, but maybe the Browns defense is just good. I think we can say. Um, but I'm, I'm going to sit Mark Andrews here. This is kind of bold, but Mark Andrews really hasn't done that much this year. But what's even crazier is what the Browns have allowed. Uh, to tight ends they've only allowed seven catches for 26 yards in three games and i think this really has to do with how they play defense but also their main guy to cover tight ends is grant delpit he is the highest uh uh pff grade against tight ends at 91.4 so he is the best guy at covering tight ends when it comes to man or certain zones um 
And I think he also comes up and plays linebacker quite a bit or like that, that fourth or third linebacker and also plays those zones. Um, but this puts Andrews at a ni- or negative 45% advantage in his matchup. Um, I think they're like what Trent was saying, the Ravens move the ball with Lamar's feet. And I think this could be a really big Zay Flowers game. So if you can sit Andrews, definitely do it. I think maybe if you can pick up someone like Musgrave, uh, maybe he's maybe more available than Laporta or even someone like Ferguson on the Cowboys. I think you pick those guys up and play them. Yeah, I. the problem is where you got Andrews, he's just really hard to sit with the capital you spent on him. And yeah. the, my only argument that is, is I actually like your argument more than what I thought I was going to like it, Seth. You did your homework. My only argument is, is if Lamar really starts running around, it just gets really hard to cover Andrews and stuff like that. Cause yeah, that's just who he them. looks for. Yeah. It's like when Lamar breaks, the play breaks down, he looks for Andrews. That's, that's my only argument, but he ha- isn't having a great season so far. We're still waiting for that you know, breakout game. What are you thinking, Jordan? Do you think Mark Andrews is still dealing um, with that quad injury a little bit? Maybe so. Maybe they brought him back a little too early. I don't know. But the game they brought him back, he scored a touchdown. He's tight. Yeah, I know. I know. I just, just yeah. No, he, he very well could be. But, uh, we could Lamar, ask for some uh, insider information. Yeah, we could. We yeah, do have I, a friend just, on the Ravens. Yeah, uh, Lamar, Lamar had a great game last week, and I guess he only threw two hundred yard, two hundred yards. He, has, he but, had a great fantasy game, right? Like I think there's two different yeah. ways to look at that. Yeah, but. he had fourteen rushing attempts for hundred yards and two rushing touchdowns, and that leads into why I don't want to play Ravens running backs. Yeah, um, I think Amari Cooper's in a good spot again. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, he looks really good. Um, obviously, it's predictable. Like we talked about, I, I wish. I would have been more on that Deshaun Watson spot last week, but uh, it's a tougher spot for sure. But I think a Cooper, you're, you're obviously playing Cooper. Jerome Ford popped up on the injury report. I didn't really see what for. Um, Got to monitor that, but I think he's in a decent role. Kareem Hunt also popped on the injury injury report too. So just had to look at those. But I think you can play one of those guys. It's not the greatest spot in the world though. It's a tough spot. They used Ford in the past game a little bit. I know they did last week. It's kind right. of it for I, me. Yeah, I'm gonna go Raven. Oh, man, this is actually a tough pick for me. Browns at home. I'm I'm gonna say Ravens this, don't win two in a lose two in a row. So I'm gonna go Baltimore. I think this Cleveland defense is like elite. You know, which I've said on this podcast. Yeah, before, I think so I'm, I'm gonna go, go Browns. I'm gonna go here. Cleveland. Okay. Yeah, they are. Uh, this good. is uh, Ford was limited with a shoulder. That's not a great – those shoulder injuries just don't go away is the problem, right? Especially yeah, for right it's, back. I think they said it's a minor issue because there's been no – there's been hardly any reports. What, what about Kareem Hunt? What did he pop up there with? Um, I could find out. Let's see here. I got it right here. Um, but maybe not. Kareem Hunt, ribs groin. That didn't sound any better. <laughs> No, especially for a guy who didn't play. Just came back to play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Doesn't look good. Okay, you guys all you guys both pick Browns. All right, yeah. going to our next game. We have the two and one Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Houston to take on the Texans, who are one and two. The totals forty one. Pittsburgh's favored by three. I have a sit in this game. I have Nico Collins as my sit. It looks like Tank Dell Dell has emerged as the wide receiver one. Uh, C.J. Stroud looks really good. He's a uh, very efficient, very good rookie quarterback. I talked about that a lot on the waivers pod, but uh, what was it? My notes here. Stroud's been sacked 11 times through three games. He's getting hit a lot. Eventually these sacks are going to add up. And I just think, you know, Pittsburgh has 13 sacks on the season. I think Watt could get to Stroud in this game. And I think Stroud's going to just be forcing it to tank. Will it tank Dale more and more? And I think, I think Nico's getting aced out of this. I was talking to a guy the other day and he was just like, yeah, I'm really happy how, Nico Collins is doing for me. I'm going to keep playing him. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, I really don't think you can play Nico. Like, I think it's just turning into, especially in this matchup, Jordan, what do you think? I think it's the matchup more than anything. I think Nico Collins will have, um, uh, like value down the road. Like, I don't think he's completely like washed. Like you a, don't a let him go. This year. Like, yeah, I just, I think it's the matchup. It's how close the spread is. 
probably not going to be a blowout. Like there's going to be games where you know Collins is going to have value. Um yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. I think I don't even know if I like Tank Dell as much this week either. You know, no, I I don't know if I love him either. Yeah, like it's just the spot. Um, but I think you can like you can play Tank Dell if you want. So I'm not anti yeah. it. But like uh, anything else in this game, um, Maybe I, 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 we've all. I, I just I, what do I <laughs> like? Um, maybe if not now, then when. You know, I, I'm not playing Najee, so it's kind of like yeah. the, I just think he's not good, and I think Warren's so much better. But we've already discussed why you can't really trust yeah. that either. So their, their snap percentages are about the same. Yeah, uh, um, Houston, Houston, according to PFF, is the 25th ranked defense on the season, and uh, they're I like giving Pickens. Up, yeah, Houston's giving up over 100 yards per game on the ground. Okay, it's just uh, hard because you don't know. Yeah, um, I like George Pickens a lot this week. Really like him a lot. He just looks really good. Um, what else here? I don't like Damian Pierce ever, so but I guess you could play him. I don't know. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna say Steelers win this game. Anyone gonna go Texans? I'm going Steelers. Man, I want to say Texans, but I think their point about the sack scares me, and I think I think that's going to play come into effect here, so I'll go Steelers. All right, next up we have the 1-2 and two Rams traveling to Indianapolis to take on the 2-1 and one Colts. The total is 45. Indianapolis is favored by one. Seth, you have a start in this game. Yeah, so my start. Uh, in this game is Zach Moss. So Zach Moss has actually put up two really good weeks in a row. Last week he put up 21 in half point PPR. I think that's more in PPR. Uh, rush, he rushed 30 times, which is a lot, for 122 and two receptions for 23 yards and a touchdown. Um, and he put up 122 yards against a good Ravens run defense. I think he faces a similar challenge, but I think it might be somewhat easier then against the Ravens. Um, what's interesting though is Anthony Richardson, I think, is going to play. So maybe that rushing upside comes down a little bit, but I don't think that matters too much. But he definitely won't be receiving 32 touches, but he'll definitely, I think, be on the 20 plus side. Um, and I think this could be like my big prediction of the week that he will be a top five running back. Um, just because I think they use him, and I actually think Zach Moss is pretty good. And I think the Colts can run the ball really well with their offensive line, as we saw Jonathan Taylor did a few years ago. All right. Anything else you got on this one, Jordan, that you want to dive I, in? I here? really like uh, – I love I love the Moss, the, what such said about Moss. I think if – I think Pittman and Downs are a little bit not as great with uh, Richardson in, and then – I really like all the Rams. Like Kyron's just a monster. His role is ridiculous. He played every snap last week. Uh, Puka played like 96% snaps. As frustrated as we were with him, he played 96% snaps. And they're just throwing the ball a lot. And this is a, in a dome, a game in a dome. I think you go right back to Atwell, Puka, Kyron. I like it. I like, I like, I like all three of those guys. Tutu Atwell in half point PPR is wide receiver 12 on the season. He has had. Three games in a row with triple digit points. Two two's looking really good, and he's still he's seventy percent rostered on sleeper. So you might want to give two two a look. You know, maybe just take a little peek at your waiver wire. You might want to give him an ad. Uh, he's not available in any leagues I'm in because I look for him, but he is seventy percent rostered. So there's a good shot you can still get two two there. I am going to say that the I'm going to go. It, Michael Pittman has had eight catches in every single game, I believe, minimum, which is kind of a big deal. He's just a target monster. He, yeah, he caught, he's caught, he caught nine passes last game. He's catching, he's caught eight passes every game at least. So fire up your Michael Pittman. Uh, yeah. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to go Rams win this one. Anyone want to go against the Rams? Man, um, this game is it in um, Indianapolis or yeah, LA? Indianapolis. Man, what do you 
you guys thinking? I think I'm gonna go Rams. I, I'm gonna go. I'm going Rams. Sorry. Okay. So we got Rams all the way across. All right. Next, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers traveling to New Orleans to take on. Their both teams are two and one. The total is thirty nine and a half. New Orleans is favored by three. This is the Jameis Winston revenge game. But Jordan, you have a sit in this game. Yeah, I got a sit in this game. Um, my sit uh, is Mike Evans. Um, so the Saints are top 10 in yards, passing yards allowed. Uh, they've only allowed two uh, passing touchdowns this year. Less than 20 fantasy points allowed to wide receivers on the season. I know it's early. So like Mike Evans is probably one of the things I've gotten the most wrong this year. Like how I felt about him and how I felt about Baker. Like I, I admit I got it wrong. But here's the deal with Mike Evans. He gets absolutely owned by Marshawn Lattimore. Every year. Owned. Every year. I got a tweet um, right here. It's an Ian Hardis tweet. He does a lot of good stuff. He used to be for PFF. I think I, who's he work for now, Trent? Ian Hardis. Do you I, know? I thought he was still PFF, but let me let me check. I'll pull it up. No, no, no. He is at Fantasy Life. He's on the Fantasy Life uh, app. So okay. uh, anyways, just he does good stuff. But anyways, he tweeted this out today. Mike Evans in 11 career matchups against Marshawn Lattimore. Seven for 147 and one touchdown in 11 games combined. 555, Whoa. 4 for 86, 4 for 64, 3 for 61, 2 for 48 and a touchdown. 1 for 14, 1 for 13. In that game, he was suspended one game for decking Matt Lattimore. Yeah, that one was a for fight. Three and a That's going to be worth something. One for... Yeah, one for two. Uh, so, like, the guy has, like, yeah. I mean, one catch, one catch. He had a zero and zero game. Zero catches, zero yards against Lattimore. Like, he just gets owned. And, like, I don't necessarily buy into that stuff a ton, but he gets owned. Like, 11 games in, it just it is what it is. It's real. 11 so, games is what it is. It's become truth and rock solid. And I think he just gets in his own head, like, he hates Lattimore, and Lattimore hates him, and unfortunately, Lattimore benefits from it. And, and Godwin, and like the, has, Godwin go ahead, has a better match. Godwin has a better matchup in this game. Yeah, and the lucky. And this the is lucky, by, I'm just gonna say the, it's by far the toughest passing matchup they've had this year. Yeah, and here's the thing: where you drafted Mike Evans, you probably can't afford to sit him even though it's hard. You know what I'm saying? But this isn't yeah. the Mike Evans that you drafted in the second, third, first round. This is a guy you maybe got in the fifth or sixth, and you might have other – he's probably wasn't your first receiver taken. You might be able to play someone else in his place. No, yeah, I I completely agree. And you know what? My luck, this will be the one game where he does well against Marshawn Lattimore, but I'm going to play the odds. I'm going to play the math. Like, like I just – it's just too good. Like, I can't – I can't – Play Mike Evans in this situation. I could see uh, Rashid White maybe having a big game. Saints defense isn't bad, but maybe he gets, you know, maybe yeah. Baker's got to throw to somebody. Uh, yeah. So I, I almost made Rashid White a start of the week here, but I did Rashad, not. Right? Rashad, sorry. That one always. Oh, Alvin Kamara's me. back, Trent. Alvin Kamara's Kamara, back. Alvin Kamara yeah, back this week. What are we doing with the so, Saints backfield? Dude? I think you, you can play, play him in this matchup. Okay. I and he's him. fresh. He's fresh. It might help him fantasy wise to have missed those games, you know. But do you like him as much with it's Winston? A good, uh, good. That's gonna say it's a good matchup for Alave too. But Winston, I don't know. Winston, I don't love him. Yeah, but you know he's gonna be airing it out, so that's always good. I'm gonna say Saints win this game. Are they the home team? I believe they are. I'm gonna go with Saints. Yeah, I'll go Saints. All right, we're going to the next game. We have the Washington uh, Commanders. Trent, Trent, who did what? you have? Sorry, I didn't. I have Saints. Who do you have, Trent? Saints. 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 Okay. You got it. Okay. Sorry. All right. Got you. So we, yep, got you. All right. Next game, we have the two and one Washington Commanders traveling to Philadelphia to take on the three and oh Eagles. The line is 45 and a half. Philly is favored by eight and a half. Jordan, you have a start in this in this game. 
Yeah. So um, my another start. I got Terry McLaurin as a start in this game. Um, and look, like I know Sam Howell just kind of sucks. Like it is what it is. But this is such a good matchup for Terry McLaurin. Like if there's a week for it, it's gonna be this week. The Eagles have pretty much like gotten torched um, in their last three games. Kendrick Bourne had a huge game week one against them. All outside receiver, uh, outside receivers. McLaurin plays most of the time on on the outside. Um, Jefferson torched him. Addison torched him, and uh, Mike Evans torched him last uh, Monday night. So um, McLaurin leads the team in targets. He's eighteen percent target share. The Eagles are a bottom ten passing yards allowed. They've given up eight passing touchdowns. That's the sec- that's the second most. So that's the most. I like Terry McLaurin. I. It is it the most. I think there's a team with the most, but I could be wrong there. Um, yeah, it might be the most. But yeah, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty big on um, the Broncos. Have given up nine, Seth, to the Eagles eight. So, mm. um, but but yeah, it, it's it's such a great matchup for McLaurin. I know Sam Howell is not good, but I just gotta trust the numbers here. And I, I think I've seen Terry McLaurin being ranked as like in the mid thirties outside of outside of wide receiver three. I think he's a top 25 receiver this week. So I, I like McLaurin quite a bit. All right. John Dodson's dead to me though. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding on, but I, it does not look pretty. I still have him in a lot of leagues. I'm very disappointed. And the fact that I'm a Cowboys fan, it makes you like want to hate them even more, you know, that you've been put faith in them, but uh Eagles side playing, you're, probably up, you're playing everybody you can. Can you play Gainwell? He still got some snaps last week. I'm assuming you probably can play him still. I don't love it. I, maybe if you think the game's a blowout, I don't love it. I think Swift's the RB one though. He just looks yeah. really good. Yeah, he does. Yeah, they can't deny it anymore. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes he has those weird. He had 54 percent of the snaps this last week though, and what was Gainwell? Uh, Gainwell was, uh, a lot of those not were after it was out of reach. Yeah, and, and Gainwell only had five fantasy points last week. 14 attempts for 43 yards. Like Swift yeah. looked far and away head and heels better than him. So I'm gonna say Eagles win this game. Anyone want to go commanders? I'll go Eagles. Yeah, I got you I got Eagles. All right, I kind of hope they both lose. And uh, next game, we have the Cincinnati Bengals, who are one and two, taking on the Tennessee Titans, who are one and two. The line is 42. Cincinnati's favored by two and a half, which seems incredibly low. Jordan, you, oh no, Seth. Seth has a sit in this game. Yeah, so I think this could be a pretty bold sit. It, from what I'm seeing, I think there's a consensus that everyone's thinking he's not going to have that bad of a game. I just don't know if I see it, though. Um, the Browns running game, we all know, is really good, and they did not run well versus the Titans last week, rushing 21 times for 58 yards, um, which was interesting because they found uh, success uh, in the passing game. Um, oh, but they did, find pass in the, they did find success in the passing game with, I think, the – Ford had a catch for a touchdown, but totaled four receptions for 55 yards. Um, however, the Titans um, do have the best yards before contact at 0.9 yards. So they are the best at uh, touching the guy at the closest time. So they usually are a better run defense, um, but that's like a negative 51 advantage matchup. Um, but the thing is, I think the, the biggest part is the Titans are very exploitable by the air. Um, they gave up 57 catches for 690 yards, which I think is top five in yards given up to receivers and four touchdowns. I just think the, the Bengals obviously found success throwing the ball last week. And I think this is going to be another big Jamar chase game. And I think the, the Bengals are just going to throw the ball all over this, um, all over this Titans team. Yeah, my only concern, Seth, is Burrow, you definitely can tell like his right calf is bugging him to push off and throw the ball. He mm-hmm. was able to get Chase some good numbers last week. But Burrow, fantasy-wise, I'm just wondering if they're going to have to lean on the running game. Yeah, Burrow had – he threw the ball 49 times last week for 26 completions, 259 yards. Uh, he's 
Yeah, he had 10 fantasy points. He, I don't believe he had any turnovers. He had one interception. He's just, he looks, he can't, he's not mobile to make those plays to, you know, buy extra time. And he's not getting that push on when he throws the ball like we like seeing Burrow do. That's my mm-hmm. only concern with Mixon. But I think most of the time, you're usually pretty right when you say not to sit, mix, to sit Mixon. And it's not a good matchup at all for Mixon. Like they're going to have to throw. It's a bad so. matchup, and I think they're going to want Burrow to throw, so I think they'll make Burrow throw, and I think, they, I think they will find success throwing the ball to Chase. Higgins is not going to have another another bad game like he did last week. Um, T. Higgins is going to be involved. Tyler Boyd's going to be great. I think they're just. I think all three pass catchers are going to be pretty good this this game on the Bengals side. Yeah, Higgins had eight targets last week and only caught two of them. So yeah, he had a couple still drops. Likes, he still likes Higgins. A lot, and Jamar Chase had a really big game last week. You know, finally, the Jamar Chase who- over under I think is at eighty three or eighty seven. I think that's a pretty easy over in my eyes. But yeah, well, maybe you go the reception prop. Uh, Chase had fifteen targets. Yeah, Chase had fifteen targets last week and caught twelve of them. So I don't know what his reception play is, but that might be a good one. It's six and a half. The week. Okay, so I'm gonna say. Real, real quick, Trent, can I just can I just yeah, talk about this team real quick? Uh, yeah. Jamar Chase, wide receiver, one on the week. Joe Burrow's a top five quarterback on the week. This is a, this is a, a smash. It's a great matchup. Burrow and yeah. Chase, like it, it's the Titans suck through the air. That's how you beat them. Um, yeah, Chase, wide receiver, one on the week. I think I like his receptions prop just a little bit more. They're doing a lot of creative stuff with him around the line of scrimmage too. Get him easy yeah. catches, getting the ball in space. So I am a. All aboard team chase. Chase is probably like the best play in DFS this week, too. He's super cheap on, on DraftKings. So um, and I like his props too. I just I can't emphasize how much like it's the best spot of the week is Chase and Burrow and uh and Higgins too. But Higgins and Chase don't correlate great, if we're being honest. Like they don't really both have big spike games in the same week, but you can play Higgins, you know, for the floor game. And then um Derek Henry's in a little better spot. I just I just don't like Derrick Henry this year. He's, yeah. I was a year early on Derrick, the Derrick Henry demise. Yeah. But. And and Spears had 54% of the snaps, 56% yeah. of the snaps last it, week. But he think didn't, they're going to be didn't. up in a game. Derrick Henry's fine. I think they're going to be down in the game. You can't you play might, Derrick. You can maybe play Spears in this game. I don't maybe. know if I do that either. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say Bengals win this game. Anyone go Titans? I'm going Bengals. Bengals. All righty. I next up we have the we're finally to the afternoon slate and uh, we have the one and two Raiders traveling to L.A. to take on the Chargers. It's a forty seven and a half total L.A. Chargers are favored by five and a half. This is basically a home game for the Raiders, though. I have a start of the week in this game and my start of the week is I have. Oh, wrong flat, wrong thing there. I have a start of the week here. I have Josh Jacobs. I think it's a really good spot for him. Chargers are giving up 130 plus yards, have given up 130 plus yards on the ground the last two games. Jacobs has got to get going. He did not look good last week. I think this is his get right game to get him going in the right direction. The Chargers are just a run funnel. Like you can run on them all you want. Garoppolo has, he's, he's able to feed Adams the ball. I'm more concerned with Adams, you know, saying he, Sounds like he maybe wants to get traded or he's just fed up with the situation. But I think they need to start leaning on Jacobs a little bit more. He had a great year last year. I think this could be the game to get him going again. This is the matchup he needs for everyone who drafted Jacobs. I don't know what you guys have yeah, to say. Yeah, I in think this. uh no, the good thing about the Raiders is that uh their volume is super concentrated, right? It's Jacobs and Devontae with Myers mixed in. I, I just I worry Brian Hoyer may start in this game, and that scares me a little bit, but you playing Devontae either way. I agree. It's a great spot for Josh Jacobs. Um, and then on the Chargers side, like it sounds like Eckler might play. Sounds like yeah. it's getting closer to that. So thank the, thank you because Josh uh, Josh Kelly is horrible, um, and I'm tired of being tempted to play Josh Kelly in anything. So, But it's a great this spot is- for Eckler if he's playing. And then uh, Keenan Allen, obviously. And then there's the Josh Palmer thing. I think Josh Palmer's in a good spot stepping up for Mike Williams. 
Hey, there was a lot of guys that put in like 50 plus fab on Josh Palmer this week. I almost made that as my waiver wire, you know, craziest waiver wire thing. But when I saw that guy pick the Steelers up for that much money, I was like, I can't give it to Palmer. But yeah, like a uh, sauce had a league that a guy just went crazy on Palmer in there. So uh, I'll give them some credit just for that. But uh, I love Keenan Allen in this matchup. Uh, I think. Par, Parham Parnum is it Parnum Donald Parnum I think he's kind of edging his I think he kind of fills that Mike Williams slot a role more than what we're thinking big body they can in throw the, the ball through in the red yeah in the, in red the end zone. zone yeah he's a touchdown guy is what it's looking like uh like I'm kind of worried about Johnston Quentin Johnson and Palmer like I'm wondering if it's just Parnum is what they end up thinking with that but uh looking at Josh Kelly his well, best game was week one when Eckler played he had 15 half PPR points but since he's had the backfield to himself, he's been totally just not good. Uh, is it possible he's better when Eckler's in the lineup? Maybe. But I'm kind of done with playing Kelly when he has the backfield to himself. He has two complete duds back-to-back weeks. Uh, there's going to be a lot of Raider fans at this game. Um, probably more Raider fans go to the char- at the L.A. Chargers Stadium to SoFi than they do when it's in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like they have a better advantage in L.A. than they do at home from what I've seen. Uh, just like what I see on TV. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what what anything else you guys want to say in here. Like Herbert has a really good. It's in a good. Spot. I just think the Chargers beat down on the Raiders. What are you thinking, Jordan? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Chargers here. Would you say Trent Chargers? I'm gonna go Chargers. As much as I want to say Raiders, I just. I don't think they can get it done at the moment. If Jimmy G's not playing, you can't like. Hold yeah, Ryan absolutely. Horror. Yeah, this is this is Wednesday night. We don't know who the quarterback is at the moment. How so, old is Brian yeah. Horner? Uh, I can tell you right now. Oh. Brian Horner, like, what mid thirties? He is thirty-seven. Whoa. So, way north of mid thirty. Well, north of mid thirties. Yeah. So I'm going to go Chargers just because QB situation. Jimmy G hurt. Oh. I'm shocked. Not really. Uh, he's always hurt. Okay. Next game we have here, and this kind of threw me off that this is an afternoon slate game because it's in Texas, but we have the one and two Patriots traveling to Dallas to take on the two and one Cowboys, 42 and a half line. Dallas is favored by six and a half. Uh, we don't have any starts and sits, but you see all the stuff that the Cowboys are worried that Will Greer is going, you know, Patriots picked him up last week. He knows all the hand signals. He knows the offense. Like it is a good advantage to have a backup QB in your room for something like that. And even Zeke knows the offense pretty well too. I know it's a different coordinator, but there is, you know, audible stuff like that, that Zeke and uh, Greer do know to make the game a little interesting there. But uh, what, what do you think? Is this a good Stevenson spot, Jordan? Like what, what are you thinking here? I think you can play Patriots tight ends. I, I would play Hunter Henry. Uh, I, I don't know what else. Yeah, I think you fire up Pollard and whatever. I I think it's simple. It's like CD Lamb, Tony Pollard, Ramondre. I I, I know uh, Zeke had a decent game last week, but uh, we saw what James Conner did this uh, Cowboys defense up the middle uh, last yeah. week. So I like Ramondre, Hunter Henry. Sure, I, I'm staying away from the New England receivers for the most part, but uh, Pollard, uh, CD. Maybe your your Ferguson's, your your Hunter Henrys, and then I like uh, Ramondre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zeke had 16 attempts last week, and he had 80 yards rushing. And Stevenson had uh, 19 attempts for 59 yards rushing. I could see if the Patriots get to the red zone, them giving Zeke a TD. I, I could see that happening. But if they get in it. If they get down this game, though, they're going to use Ramondre. You know that Absolutely. game with the Jets was kind Absolutely. of dumpster fire and close. And yeah, I'm going to say Dallas wins this game. Any anything else you guys want to say into this? I'll, I'll go Dallas, but got, it scares me that they lost the Cardinals last week. Yeah, I got what Dallas too. All right, Dallas. Next next game we have the biggest. Uh, what is it? Not the total, but we have the Cardinals who are one and two going to play the 49ers who are three and oh, the line is 44. San Francisco is favored by 14 and a half points. 
Jordan, you have a sit in this game. So first of all, we have James Conner on the road as an underdog running, a 14-point dog running back on yeah. the road. It's, first of all, that's not good. You don't like that. Um, so I got James Conner as my sit. The Niners give up the third, uh, their third in yards, rushing yards allowed, and have only allowed two rushing touchdowns through three weeks. Their sixth best run defense, according to PFF. Um, and I think what they'll do is probably try to shut down James Conner and make Dobbs beat them through the air. Um, so my only concern, and this is where Connor could beat me, is if he gets a lot of receptions. But he's only had three targets and two catches through the last two weeks. So I know that's maybe a little bit of game script stuff too, but that's how Connor beats me with this is on the dump offs. But I, I just think that I, I think you can sit Connor this week. He's been really good, but I think you can sit him this week. All right, interesting. Maybe not interesting play here. Marquise Brown does have back to back games with touchdowns. For what it's worth, it's and a tough matchup. It's a tough matchup, but two weeks ago he had ten targets, six receptions. Last week he had seven targets, five receptions. He hasn't had an over a hundred yard receiving game yet, but he is finding the end zone. Uh, maybe a garbage time TD, but uh, maybe if you have to play him, you have to. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah, it is not a great matchup. So. Uh, I'm going to say 49ers. Christian McCaffrey's in a huge slam dunk position. I also like Kittle in this game too. Uh, Brock Purdy, if you want to stream that you just want to save, you know, 12 to 15 points, I think that's not a bad move either, depending what your quarterback situation is. Uh, Trent, next can, week, we hit the, can we hit the anytime touchdown again on a CNP? I think we should hit the anytime touchdown. He has, what is it, 12 straight games with a TD? Yeah. Seth, what do you think? We're hitting it again. Yeah, we're hitting it for sure, man. This matchup is way too good. He's probably going to be the first touchdown yeah. scored. All right, probably. I'm going to go. I'd even bet he's I, the first touchdown of the game. I think I'm going to go, just looking at my sleeper stuff right now, I'm going to look at uh, Jefferson over receiving yards, Thielen receptions, and CMC anytime touchdown. Anytime? I wonder if that gets you to 5X. We'll see. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. All right, I'm going to say 49ers win. Anyone uh, – like no, this is where Phil. Nice. This is where Phil yeah, would ask man. if he could take the points, and I think we would tell him no because fourteen and a half is just it's, crazy. Yeah, you can't you can't yeah. bet the Niners will co cover the two. If it was thirteen and a half, maybe you can because you get that under the two touchdowns, but you can't yeah. at fourteen. Like that's just even at thirteen and a half, you're not doing it because even if they're up like thirty five to, to you know seventeen, they could score a touchdown at the end. Like you're screwed. Yeah. All right, next up, we have Sunday night football. We have the 2-1 and one Kansas City Chiefs traveling to New York to take on the 1-2 and two Jets. The line is 42.5, or the total is 42.5. Kansas City is favored by 9.5. Jordan has a start in this game. But before we get into that, Taylor Swift will be in attendance, just so you know. So all those, all those new Swifty listeners we have inherited, thank you. And all those people that have bought all those Travis Kelsey jerseys. Seth, I, I think Phil, you know, he's a big Taylor Swift guy. I think he finally, you know, he was so happy that Taylor Swift made Travis Kelsey relevant. So all that stuff is pretty crazy, all that stuff with Taylor Swift. And we've talked about her far too much on this pod. So I'm so sorry. Jordan, who is your uh, start in this game? Yeah, so I got Brees Hall as a start. Um, I know he's a dog, a 10 double digit dog, which I don't love, but he is at home. And this is kind of like an opportunity thing. Um, he's starting to play more, plays most snaps of the season last week, 50%. Um, compared to 25, uh, compared to his teammates, Dalvin Cook, my, Michael Carter both played 25% each. So highest snap percentage of the of the of the season so far. The Chiefs are a bottom 10 run defense according to pff it's a neutral o-line d-line matchup for the jets uh, so that should help the run game at least it's a neutral uh kansas city gave up over 100 yards rushing to the detroit running backs combined and gibbs and montgomery week one um week two they were good against the run against the jaguars um and then week three they play the bears i'm not taking anything out of that game um Zach Wilson's really bad. I think the Jets uh, 
are going to try to get Brees Hall involved a lot more this week. Um, and I think that just means his role is increasing. Did you see the, what the Chiefs linebacker Willie Gay said when they interviewed him? I didn't him? see it. I didn't see they it. Said, they said, uh, like, what what trouble or what does Zach Wilson, like, concern you guys? Or, like, what do you think their passing attack looks? And he he laughed. Like, he literally paused, chuckled, and then said, um, they look like a team who wants to run the ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you so, see all the like, stuff like that. The locker room's kind of in shambles right now. I don't know if you've yeah. heard about that, but the Jets, the Jets defense is saying if we played this bad, we'd get benched by you, Sayla, and you're letting him play this bad. Joe Namath came out and said that, you know, Zach Wilson needs to go. So it's looking like the right it looks like Sayla's gonna lose the locker room if he doesn't make a decision. And that's why I think Steve said he's tempted to play Devin Achon over Garrett Wilson, as hard as that is to do. Unless they end up putting in a backup that just can get him the ball a little bit better. Yeah, I just I Mike like White? Garrett Wilson, his talent so bad. But no, Mike White's in Miami now. Yeah. Mm. They did bring oh. in a they did bring in a backup. Timian. Who's the backup? Trevor yeah, Trevor Simeon. Simeon. Who is it? Yeah. Um oh. no, I just I, I think uh I like Brees Hall. Like he's explosive. He I think he's starting to get the fact that he played his his snaps are increasing. I think this is a good spot for Brees and I think it'd be a top 20 running back this week. Okay. Um, okay. So I have, uh, I, I'm going to go with chiefs. Anyone taking the jets? Um, I'm going no, to chiefs. chiefs. All right. Monday night football, last game on the slate. Make sure to stay for our underdog draft to close out this show. We have the Seattle Seahawks who are two and one traveling to New York giants who are one and two. And we have, what, two primetime games in New York again with that terrible turf. I don't like that. Last Monday was the first Monday that we didn't have a huge injury in a while on Monday Night Football. You know, there's that Monday Night Football curse people have been talking about. Totals 46 and a half. New York Giants are favored by one and a half. We have no starts. We have no sits. I like Seattle wide receivers in this game. I don't know who you really want to play on the New York side of the ball, Jordan, but uh, what, what, are you, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Uh, I think Daniel Jones is going to have a good game. Um, I think he's going to be able to run the ball, run the run around. I mean, he hasn't really done that as much as we thought he was going to on the year, but I think he will this game. And I think that's just going to, I honestly, I don't know what, who's going to be the guy in the passing game. Maybe it's going to be, um, you know, why am I blanking on his name? The tight end. Um, why am I blanking uh, on his Waller, name? From, Waller. Waller. Yeah. I think Waller is going to have a decent game. Uh, it, it might be any of the receivers or all the receivers are going to be good. The Seahawks defense is not – their passing defense is not that good. I, However, I think Jamal Adams might be coming back this week, so that's something to think about too. Um. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's a really good you, – you mentioned Kenneth Walker, Seth? No, I didn't. No, I think Kenneth Walker is in a really good uh, spot here. We saw what the Niners did – Um. To them last week, we saw what the Cowboys did a week one. Who'd they play? Oh, the Cardinals. James Conner was really good against them. So I think it's a, a Kenneth Walker smash week here. And then I agree. Like it, I think Daniel Jones has a bounce back, uh, bounce back spot for Daniel Jones here. Okay. I'm going to say Seattle wins this game. I think you can play Tyler Lockett if you have to. Uh, I think you can play like all I receivers. Said, I would say. Yeah. On to Trent's point, I'm not too sure about JSN just yet, but this could be the game where he does go it could, off. It, no, it, it definitely could. Definitely I could. would just stay away, though, if you, unless when you have to buy him. This is my prediction for JSN, guys. I think JSN goes off week six, the week after the bye week. Okay? So he has a bye week after this game. There is potential that someone drops a rookie wide receiver that hasn't been doing anything. Week five bye, and you pick him up week six – if he doesn't do anything this Monday night, there's potential people get impatient with the rookies. So that's just my point on that right there. That was kind of my argument at the beginning of the year. He could go off though on Monday night football. It's a good matchup. I'm hoping he doesn't. And I'm hoping I can find him in waivers for week six to pick up. So uh, I'm going to say Seattle I, wins. I got the giants winning this game, but also we need um, scores, totals, total right. score points. I am going to say that the, Seahawks win uh, 31-24. Okay. 
Okay, we just need the total score. So that would be Sorry. what? My bad. I'm used to doing it. Okay, I'm going to say this game has uh, 48 points. Is okay. it? What's the total? 46 and a half? 46 and a half. 48. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Let's do 44. Okay. What are you thinking, Jordan? I'm going to go uh, 43. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. Now let's get over to our underdog draft. Seth, are you, you ready for that? I think we're waiting on you. Oh, yep. And while we're waiting on that, I will recap all the starts and sits that we had this week. My starts were Josh Jacobs, Javante Williams, Jordan's starts were Brees Hall, Terry McLaurin. Seth starts were Zach Moss and Adam Thielen. The sits, I had Ravens running backs and Nico Collins. Jordan had James Conner, Mike Evans. Seth had Joe Mixon and Mark Andrews. So that is what we have right there for all of our starts and sits. And remember, guys, don't be rude. Share the dudes. It really helps us out. You know, if you enjoy us whispering in our, into your ears, you know, share us with a friend. You know, if we made you laugh, we made you cry, you liked our picks. Hey, maybe you don't like our picks and you want to send it to a friend that you don't want to be good at fantasy football. Whatever reason, really helps out if you share us with a friend, guys. We're trying to get to as many listeners as we can so that we can make more exciting, fun content for you guys. So uh, you share us. We all grow. We learn together. It's fun. But we're going to start this draft here shortly. And, uh, yeah, just wanted to let you know about that. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, – we're looking at this here, Jordan, and this is a snake draft on Underdog. Remember to use promo code DUDES. They'll match up to $100. It's a lot of fun, guys. They got other stuff besides just drafts, though. So coming up first, I am on the clock here, guys. And I think I the main slate for Sunday. So main Sunday, Sunday more, slate. Not 6.30 a.m. game. All right, so no Jags. Okay, I'm going to go no with Jags. Christian McCaffrey versus the Cardinals with the 101 pick. Uh, Seth is now on the clock, and what do you got so, here? So you, I'm embarrassed. I'm taking Justin Jefferson. I'm embarrassed to say I, I don't know if maybe I maybe I'm not embarrassed. I did do one of these drafts earlier today. Okay, that's not. I like the team I picked. Okay, so Jordan's on the clock, and you can play a quarterback, a couple running backs, wide receivers, or a tight end. You don't and. Uh, so There's what do you got here, Jordan? See, that's who I was thinking about taking, but I'm not sure. Jordan, I'm not hearing you right now. I don't know if you're yeah, muted. Yeah, I got Jamar Chase. Sorry, I accidentally clicked the mute button. Jamar Chase, wide receiver, one on the week. And then I have uh, – I'm going to take Tyreek Tyreek too. Oh, nice. Very nice. That's a nice stack right there. Going key what do you got here, here, Seth? Just for the volume. Out. All right, I'm up. I think I'm going to go with uh, the squeaky wheel. I'm going to go with Devontae Adams. And then who do I want to take here? I'm going to go uh, Stefan Diggs. So I took Pollard and Diggs at, or Adams and Diggs right there. So, so I'm going to back pop. here. And I, I know I think Eckler's going to play. So I'm going to draft Eckler. Gutsy, gutsy. You're up, Jordan. I'm going to grab uh, Tony Pollard here. And then I don't love it, but I'll just take out A.J. Brown here. I like that three receiver with A.J. Brown, Tyreek, uh, and Chase. I'm taking the best quarterback on the board right now. All right. You took Josh Allen. What do I have here? I got Adams and Diggs. I don't think I want to stack any quarterbacks because I'm not going to play uh, whoever the Raiders quarterback is. Uh, I am going to go with I'm going to go with uh, TJ Hawkinson, tight end one on the season, and then I'm going to come back with uh, I go with CD Lamb. So Seth is on the clock here. So I'm going to go with my start of the week in Zach Moss. Okay, what do you got here, Jordan, to close this puppy up? Is this our last two picks here? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, shoot. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to play Joe Burrow over Jalen Hurts. And Great. I'm going to finish out with... Man, it's tough. This tight end is rough here. 
I'm just going to, you know, I know, uh, Seth, did you have Mark Andrews to sit? I'm just going to yeah, hope that's that uh, maybe, maybe you're wrong here. <laughs> well, I'm hoping I may I'm wrong, but I think George Kittle is going to have a killer game this week. Uh, that, was a, that was a great pick for that, where you got him. Last pick in the draft. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm going to go with Justin Herbert here. All right. And Here's the, project- the funny thing is Jalen Hurts didn't get drafted in this draft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I Jordan, do you have the um, results? Do you have the results on that? I exited out. If someone wants to save everybody's team, yeah. Quick. So uh, Trent has a Trent has a projection of ninety four point nine. Seth has a projection of ninety two point four. I have a projection of ninety point seven. I think if I take Hertz, I'm probably projected number one. Um, but I, I'm just gonna put my money where my mouth is on Burrow. I think he has a great week this week. So um, yeah, that's. Uh, do we need to, you want to go over the teams real quick again, Trent? Yeah, just everybody's picks real quick. If you want to go through them. Okay, so Trent, you got um, Herbert, uh, McCaffrey, Devontae, Stefan Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, TJ Hawkinson. Seth has Josh Allen, Austin Eckler, Zach Moss, uh, Justin Jefferson, Keenan Allen, and George Kittle. And then I have Joe Burrow, Tony Pollard, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, AJ Brown, Mark Andrews. Um, Obviously, all these teams look great because it's a three-person draft. So, But they're fun. All I'm right, actually guys. what's funny is I meant to pick Jalen Hurts and I picked Josh Allen on accident. You did say best quarterback in the board, and I was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I did not mean to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, don't make a mistake like Seth, guys. Go to underdog, draft your teams right. You know, don't pick the wrong guy. We will see you next time. And as always, we'll see you on Monday. And as always, take care. This has been another episode of the Fantasy Football Dudes Podcast. Remember to rate, review, and follow. For more information, go to www.thefantasyfootballdudes.com. And remember, we are sorry for absolutely nothing.